Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins where we take a look at any comic book superhero, villain, or team. This time around, we are looking at Gizmo Duck, Fit and Crack Shell himself, a, a bean counter. He actually worked at a bean factory for Scrooge McDuck counting beans before he became his accountant because he could literally count faster than the speed of sound. Well, you know, he really, really wanted to help out and protect... Uh, protect uh, Scrooge McDuck, find his magical first dime, and in doing so, ended up shouting out his catchphrase, which is Blather Strike. I believe I got that right. And uh, ended up activating Blather Skite, excuse me, and ended up activating the Gizmo armor. And ever since then, he is Duckbird's greatest superhero. Ha ha ha! I got that one. Yes, this is a commissioned video. Thank you to Chrononaut for that. And if you want to commission a video, just go on over to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the till. Just pick out whatever subject you want, whatever topic you want. I've changed a few of them, actually. I, I changed a couple of them. So there's a new one, even, if you want to go check it out. By all means, you do that. We'll get the video right out to you ASAP. And, uh, yeah, with all that aside, let's get to the first appearance of Gizmo Duck. Gizmo Duck first appeared in Super Duck Tales, a long movie that was broken up into a few episodes. He first appeared in Frozen Assets 2. That's the name of the episode. And I figured, you know what? Since I can't do the entire cartoon, I'll just do the scene where he got the suit itself. And I can only do 10-second intervals of showing the cartoon. Otherwise, I get copyright strike. So uh, thank you very much in advance for your patience on that. Security system of incredible strength and firepower. I call it Gizmo Duck. It's bulletproof, fireproof, and knuckleproof. Knuckle. Bulletproof, fireproof, knuckleproof. You would think that if it was bulletproof, mm, punch proof is already a given. Also, why isn't Gy Gyro or is it Gyro seeing Fenton right now? Okay, I, I know he's got all, all of the good intentions in the world, but you would think that he would understand Scrooge would already have everything under control and he wouldn't have to take the armor or anything like that to protect Scrooge from the Beagle Boys, especially when they foiled him so many times already. See, like right here, he could at least say, ooh, 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 Scrooge, I want the job, I want the job. I mean, he can count at the, at the speed of sound. Or, actually, so can everybody else, can't they? That's weird. Faster than the speed of sound. How can you do that? One, two, three, four, five, five, how, how do you go faster than that when you're actually speaking? I just realized how stupid that phrase is. Huh. Okay. And there you go. Fenton just said, I'm a thief. I got to get my hands on that suit rather than just saying, hey, I want the job. But first, I've got to respect that wacko inventor. I'll find a great code word in this dictionary. Let's see. Nonsense. Look at that. He's even hatching evil schemes. Look, okay, you know what? I watched some DuckTales when, when I was younger, but I was like 20-something, so I didn't watch it all the time. Um, but you guys can explain this to me, I guess. Number one, foolishness. Two, jibber jammer. Three, brother skite. Oh, brother skite. Good. Yeah, I can see where this is going. <laughs> uh, catchphrase of, uh, Fenton's, I guess. That sounds like a word nobody uses. I guess the biggest sin to point out right here is that he only hit three buttons to type in blather strike. Blather strike. Like there's a there's a button marked blath and another one marked er. Strike, okay, sure, fine. That that could be like delete, but blath and er. Okay, I never knew I really, really want to see a fireworks display that explodes into popcorn. That 
Disney get on that. If anybody could do it, it's them. Okay, maybe he lost the dime and he didn't tell Scrooge or something like that. I don't know. I haven't seen the whole story. I've only seen this one particular part. So maybe, I guess, uh, he's afraid to tell Scrooge he lost the dime, so he's got to get it back himself or, or something like that. I guess I could see that being a reason he wants to do everything in secret. Yeah, it didn't take a genius to see that one coming, and I am far from being a genius, so there you go. Let's continue. That is one very tiny neck hole. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if your head squeezed through that, you're dead. I did hear, however, that Gizmo Duck was supposed to be a robot, but then... Scrooge figured, okay, it doesn't have a brain, so we need to make it a suit or something like that. That would make sense for such a small neck hole. That, and of course, the ducks are drawn with tiny little necks. So that's where Iron Man 3 got it. Disney's gonna sue somebody. Okay, so the ducks have the webbed feet. You got to figure if his le or, or, do his legs stop in that little bowl part where his butt and his balls would be? Or do they go down into his little uh, red things? And if so, how are his webbed feet, are they crushed in there? This, this raises a lot of questions. Granted, you wouldn't have asked them when you were a kid watching this. But okay, I'm an adult here. I got these questions. So does Gyro ever, like, uh, you know, say, hey, Scrooge, did you hire somebody? Because we literally just talked about this, and when he meets Scrooge, would he ever say, dude, I didn't hire you, get out of my damn armor? Or is this, I don't know. Do you know what? I think I'm putting way too much thought into this. Let's just finish it up. Alrighty, we got a little Greatest American Hero in there as well, what with him not knowing the instructions. So there you go. That's the very first appearance of Gizmo Duck, and this is called Comic Book Origins, so we have to talk about the comic book origins of Gizmo Duck, and that happens right here in Disney Adventures Volume 1, Issue Number 2, starring Fred Savage, America's Sweetheart, although he's not a part of the Gizmo Duck story. That one's called, like, The Littlest Gizmo Duck or something like that. Anyway, let's get into it. The book opens when we see Huey, Dewey, Louie, and the girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot her name. <laughs> I'm a Disney guy. I should know this. A dream come true takes shape in Scrooge McDuck's garage. That's the last bolt. Wow, we're the only kids on the block with their own Gizmo Duck suit. You mean the only kids in the world? I hope everybody else won't want one. How long did it take us to build this thing? Um, what comes after a trillion seconds? So Louis decides that they should draw straws to see who gets to wear the suit during the crime fair. This irritates Webby because they only got three straws. And she's like, hey, you guys forgot somebody. Me, I helped build that suit. I want a chance to wear it too. And that's when Huey fires back. Webby, get serious. You can't be Gizmo Duck. You're a girl. And she says, oh, yeah, well, you can't be Gizmo Duck either because he's not a boy. He's a robot. That's when Fitton comes in, you kids miss your uncle's art exhibit, and I won't be an accountant, I'll be unemployed. And we see Webby seems to have won as she's piling the suit into the car, and the other boys are kind of walking away going, girls aren't crime fighters, if the guys at school catch Webby in our suit, you could kiss our reputations goodbye. Meanwhile, at the Duckbird Museum of Fine Art, the Bugle Boys work to send another reputation packing. Ma's plan is perfect. We swipe Scrooge's priceless collection of money art and stack them with Ma's very own hand-painted replacements. A few rooms away, 
When Uncle Scrooge sees me in this suit, he'll definitely want me to wear it tomorrow. Yuck, the only pictures here are of boring money. Proving once again that the only people who find money useless or boring are the people who have plenty of it. But after Huey decides that money is much more exciting to spend than it is to look at, the boys go looking for wherever Webby went to and they find her in the suit. But before they could say anything, they notice the Beagle Boys are stealing Uncle Scrooge's paintings. To which Webby says, this is a job for Gizmo Duck. She rolls out, put that art down and your hands up. The Bugle Boys scream, it's the law boys, every beagle for himself. And they begin to run away. But the Beagle Boys quickly sees who actually in the suit. Put the brakes on it, you muscle heads. That's not the real Gizmo Duck. Hey, it's Scrooge's nephews. And there's nothing like a duck napping to top off a day of honest larceny. Nab em! Uh-oh, it's the Beagle Boys. Webby, use the suit. And she sprays whipped cream at them. Whipped cream? Yum, treats before the tricks. That fake, fake suit's not stopping them. Run! See in the real world? The kids would have known where to find the guns and really build a suit that could stop the criminals. We see that the Bugle Boys have them surrounded. Leave us alone, you bully, says Webby, and then Huey says, Yeah, Uncle Scrooge will be here any second. The more the merrier, kiddies, would the real Gizmo Duck. Hey, up there, tell McDuck we got the kids. And Scrooge yells, Har my hair on their head. I can't do Scottish. On their heads, and I'll import every banshee in Scotland to hound you scoundrels. Cough up all your art treasures, a copter to take us out of here, and nobody gets hurt. Mr. Scrooge, he's talking zillions of dollars. I tell me something I don't know, but I have to play along with him until I can come up with a plan. And just to be sure you don't try nothing screwy, the girl's coming with us. They can't take Webby Fint in time for the real Gizmo Duck. I couldn't have said it better myself. Blabber and brother. <laughs> Let me try that again. Blabber and blather skite. Moments later. All right, Beagle Boys. I give it up, kid. That phony costume don't impress nobody no how. Gizmo Duck shoots a web out. Gizmo Duck shoots a net out of some of the Beagle Boys. If it's impressions you want. Try this song for size, Fishing by Homer. Now that's a catch. I'll take care of you boys. You save Webby. Bad guys don't have a leg to stand on when Gizmo Duck appears. Later, I hope you kids have learned a lesson. Crime fighting's dangerous no matter who you are. Now, who's going to be wearing this to the crime fair? And we see Fenton all up in their fake outfit. Well, I guess I learned to keep my big beak shut. And there you go, gang, that was the first uh, comic book appearance and the first animated appearance of Gizmo Duck. I had a lot of fun with this one. I have a lot of fun with any of the Disney origins. Magic of Dispel was the last one I did, and you should check that one out. I'll leave that in the uh, at the end or in the credits here. Just a lot of fun, gang. Seriously. What do you guys think? This makes me want to watch some uh, DuckTales, and I hear he was in Darkwing a lot as well, so... That may be fun. I was talking to Dalton about maybe watching some of those as a uh, uh, watch party or something. Anyway, gang, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it already. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to commission a video, go on over to Ko-Fi and uh, do that. Or you can just drop a dollar in the till, help us keep the lights on and such. I certainly appreciate everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.